Hello, welcome to my channel. It's your girl Sharon, aka the Melon Nostalgic Runner. And we are back again for another episode of The Real Housewives of New York City. And this is episode 15. Uh, sorry, season 15, episode 5. And this is called um, Without a Clue. And <laughs> okay, so this episode started off well. And to kind of end it well, but it's just something is still off when it comes to this show. And I think what it is, is that um, the arguments a lot of times don't make any sense. Um, and about the time it does make sense, it's resolved. So it's very frustrating as a viewer to understand what's really happening because they're like the arguments, I feel like they're all in code. So I don't understand what they're fighting about. Um, because yeah, again, there's another issue on the show and I'm just like, oh my gosh, does anyone have fun here? Um, and then the other issue is that, um, that I've noticed is that Bryn's, Bryn's unbearable. I do not want her on the screen anymore. I don't like Bryn. I mean, I've made it very clear. I don't like her. Like she is giving go away. I just don't like, she's not even a good enough villain or even like she's not good enough where i want that i need her around and honestly um i kind of wanted to skip anything and everything that she was in this episode um if you were to take that out it would be actually a decent episode to be honest like because the conflict is all really conflict that she is centered around and it's very overly manufactured, very forced, and very much like, okay, if she's no longer in the group, then you would have actual true organic conflict that's not childish and quite annoying. Because that's another thing. The conflict is very childish. It's very, I don't know. It's not good. It, it really is very, very annoying. But anyway... Let me get into the episode. So there were parts of the episode that I actually did really, really like. And one major part of the episode that I liked, and they gave me a little bit of it, and I still want more of it, was Psy. Um, now, I know last season, Psy kind of was obnoxious. She was, but she was not unbearable. She was just obnoxious. Um, all the things that Psy has with her family, and anytime where she's like kind of opening up about her mother, and all that amazing chef's kiss like honestly um her with like her family you see a softer side of her and it's like a breath of fresh air and so the episode did start with Sai with her husband and they're at <clears throat> a farmer's well i think they're like a farmer's market situation or some type of like um nursery um to get um plants Cause they're going to just start gardening and um because of her spending because she she basically shops organic when it comes to fruits and vegetables so they're going to just start growing plants and then this is where we find out that she her and her husband actually do have a house in upstate new york that they stay at um i think on the weekends like once and then another day of the week or something like that and so um, that's where they're going to have the garden stuff at. And we also find out in this scene that, so Sai's mom has been, you know, has been passed for now two years. And so she's finally ready to get her mom out of her closet because her mom's cremated. And so part of like her mom, she wants to actually um, put some of her ashes into like a, like into the ground with a tree to grow it. And um, because her mom really, really loved nature when she was alive and she would feel free. And so we do see later on in this episode that um, they do actually do that with her aunt. Her aunt comes, um, which is her mom, was her mom's sister. Um, they have a little bit of a mini ceremony and they get it done. Also, too, we do see this upstate New York house, and she did renovate it. And um, it's a beautiful house, beautiful place, and she worked hard for it. And honestly, that's kind of one of the things that I did enjoy watching this episode was seeing all of that. 
Um, oh, side note, I'm not going in order the episode because there really wasn't much to this episode because again, New York still has a lot of work to do. And this episode, I was hoping it would be enough to turn things around for me, for me, whether I want to review this episode, review the show or not. And I'm actually, I don't know. Um, I'm going to watch next week's episode to see if it's worth reviewing. And if it's like Basula, we're not going to review it. Um, I, you know, I know I said I was going to give it till the five, fifth episode, but this episode outside of certain people, I actually didn't mind it. So there's that. Next we have, um, Jessel with Pavit and, um, they're basically planning her clueless theme birthday party. And Jessel definitely did live up to the theme of being clueless because Jessel kind of is clueless to a certain degree. And, um, but it was cute. Um, Jessel is still one of my favorites on the show. Um, she definitely gives ditzy, but like on a great way. And, um, I like that she had, um, I'm just actually going to fast forward to what ended up happening with her. She decided to have three outfit changes, which she did. And only her last outfit was a clueless based outfit. All the other outfits were clueless inspired, but not clueless based. And one thing that, um, outside of that, it was a really, really cute. And, and also the party seemed like a really, really nice party. Except for, I don't know if the food was that great. <laughs> it's because Sai had a reaction when she tried to eat one of the things that they had there. Also, to, um, I think only the only everyone else was happy about the outfit changes, but Bryn. But we know why, because Bryn is jealous, insecure, and very much. Um, if things are not about her, she's not interested. And I will say why later on, because she, again, continues to be unbearable. Um, I really want her off my screen, and yeah. So I'll get more into that in a little bit. Um, but yeah, that's kind of what happened here, at least when it comes to the party. It did seem like a really, really nice party. Everyone kind of dressed on theme. It was very, very cute. Um, let me kind of then just go on to what's going on with the other ladies, and then we'll get to the actual why I'm just over Bren. Okay, so then next we have Jenna at her new job. Um, yes, she has a new job. She now actually has three jobs now. So she had the first two jobs that she had that we found out from last season. And then now we find out that she is an editor-in-chief at large for an online fashion magazine, which means the at-large means she um, works from home a lot. So she only goes to the office, I think, like once a week or something like that. And we got to see her in action. And it was a very, very cute scene and nice to see her in action and very, very much New York. And this was another thing that I did truly appreciate watching. Um, again, I guess my only issue with Jenna is we're not really getting much of her personal life, which, again, is kind of the major problem with the show is not much of the ladies are sharing the personal life and the ones who are it's kind of few and far in between and the rest of this is just like manufactured stupid drama that is really centered around per one person and it's just due to that one person's insecurities and it kind of came out later on that um, Uba, when Uba said what she said the last episode about how, like, all the other ladies feel the way that she feels, she's not really wrong. It came up later on, and, um, yeah, we'll, we'll get to that. So then next, we actually get to see Uba's apartment for the first, I, well, I don't remember if we went to her apartment last season or not, but anyway, we get, we get to see a lot of Uba's art. Um, because we did find out this earlier, um, I think it was either episode two or three on the way to the Hamptons that Uba does art, um, like does paintings and things like that. And so she's sharing that with Raquel because she did invite Raquel to come over to check out her art. And they did bond and they were talking about the art and that was very nice. And they f d did go from speaking to about the art to transitioning about what happened at the Hamptons. And um, yeah, Uba is, 
you know, she's done with um, Bren. She doesn't even need to revisit or anything. She's like, yeah, I, I'm done with her. There's no need to even continue on. And Uba did explain why she was so upset because she was never able to say why she was upset to the whole entire group about how condescending Bren has been and how even before they were talking in front of the group, she was being condescending before. And then she also re-mentioned and talked about the whole angry black woman thing and how she's going to look. And um, in um, Raquel's confessional, Raquel was very much taken aback and kind of, you could tell Raquel's also offended by this work, by what she said. And I am too. And I think that's the other reason why I'm kind of off print because it's, it's not, I mean, it, it's not a good look. It is not a good look. I know she's biracial, but the major problem that I have with her saying what she's saying is it doesn't help that she's biracial and very much white passing. And she really only seems to show that biracial side. I mean that her, that her other side of her when it's convenient to her. And I have a huge problem with that. So there's just a lot of things fundamentally when it comes to Bren, I'm just over. Um, but so, but Raquel does think that Uba should, you know, try to hear Bryn out. But I don't think Raquel quite understands that Uba has tried this with Bryn before. And I'm kind of, I'm sorry, me and me and Uba, we're on the same page. I agree. I, there is no way you're going to be able to continue to speak in condescending towards me more than one. Like you can maybe get me that way twice. And after that, I'm off of it. So I definitely agree with Uba when it comes to this. Um, and then from there, we do, um, kind of go on to before the party, some of the ladies meet up to go shopping. And then this for me is when I was, I liked the episode all the way until here. So Jessel is shopping for outfits for the party. So it's Jessel and she, um, has, um, Aaron and Bryn meet her to go shopping. And, um, so out of nowhere, which made no sense to me, Aaron is not happy about how Jenna is now hanging out with Sai now. Um, she's she's seeing Jenna as being fake, not transparent, and kind of being not a real friend towards her because we know what's going on with Aaron. She feels like she just needs her friends to have her back more than ever. And because, you know, Jenna isn't really there for her right now, she feels a way. And I think the thing that is kind of annoying for me when it comes to Aaron is, for one, this came out of nowhere to me, in my opinion. I didn't know where this came from. For two, I do distinctly remember Jenna saying last season that she has a tough time communicating and um, pretty much like articulating, you know, um, not really articulating, um, nurturing friendships because she's used to people being straightforward with her and Aaron is doing literally the direct opposite of that. So Jenna, I don't, I, I don't blame Jenna for not understanding or not even knowing that Aaron is upset because I didn't even know until this episode as a viewer. So it doesn't make any sense. And this is my other problem that I have with the show is that a lot of the conflicts I'm like, why is she upset with her? But then later on, once they do talk later on at um, Jessel's party, we actually find out the real reason. And it's not really about Jenna and Cy. It's totally about Bren. It's been about Bren the whole entire time. But I feel like even Erin didn't really know the real reason until she really started talking it through with Jenna. And then they kind of got to the bottom of it together. So while Aaron is venting to, um, and I did skip ahead a little bit here. So while Aaron is kind of venting to Jessel and Bryn, Bryn <clears throat> is just being insufferable and talk, talking so much crap about Uba and Sai. And she thinks both of them should apologize to her. She still doesn't think she did anything wrong being completely delusional she is still standing on how she talked to uba about how uba the way she acts is all the way wrong and i'm like oh 
So you think someone who's acting like an actual, I don't know, she's acting like a woman with feelings and emotions and passionate, that's, that, that's a problem? According to, um, according to Bryn, yes. And I'm just kind of like, oh, and I'm sorry. I'm, I don't want to get into why I feel even more annoyed by Bryn when it comes to this conversation about policing how Uba acts. But to me, it's very coded. It's coded to me. And I don't like it. Anyway, besides that, then she says a whole bunch of horrible things about Sai too. And then claims that Sai never apologized to her. But then, of course, the producers go back and literally show Sai wrote a whole entire written apology to her and actually did apologize. But... At this point, Sai doesn't owe her anything. It's still Bren who owes everyone an apology. And so Bren is just being basically insufferable and delusional, and I'm over her. And let me get into why even more when it comes to this party. So let's get to the party. So the party's here. Jenna came as Cher's dad. Hilarious. Um, Aaron as a, as a Cher. Abe as Josh. And he actually does kind of look like um, Paul Rudd's character, Josh. It, it, it actually kind of checks. Um, Bryn showed up as Dion. And then also Sai showed up as Dion. And then Becca was just wearing a normal outfit. I feel like she would always wear. Uba kind of had her own version of a share outfit. And <clears throat> the whole entire time. So... <sighs> Bren is pretty much gas is gaslighting um Becca and Becca's like catching it like why do you want me to drink around you so badly and um and I'm glad that um Becca's standing her ground it isn't really doing what you know Bren wants her to do but then of course like Bren's acting like a told child and basically says yeah I find her boring and it just kind of reminds me of <clears throat> and I will, two things can be true. I will say this. I do think Becca is not really great for the show because she doesn't really have a lot going on. Um, and, and the things that she has going on, she's not really willing to share and she's just very awkward, but I don't necessarily think she's boring. Um, I think she just isn't really willing to open up to you, but based off of your track record, Bryn, why would anyone open up to you? Just saying. Anyway, and then also too, then later on, um, it, it wasn't even that long. It was probably like an hour or so within the party. Bryn leaves early. She Irish goodbyes and leaves early and says that she has a spray tan appointment and she wasn't going to miss it. And then she leaves. And no warning. Jessel didn't know about this until at that moment. And then she just leaves. Very disrespectful, very rude, and just <clears throat> being doing the most. And to me, I think the real reason why she did that is because she's not center of attention. I think that Bryn is a child. And I don't really want to watch a housewife who's a child on my screen. So anyway, that was kind of my final straw with Bryn. But then fortunately, she wasn't really in the episode for the rest of it. And then this is where after that, then we see that um, Jenna ends up going to talk to Aaron. After Aaron, and this is my annoying thing with Aaron, Aaron's literally talking to everyone but Jenna about how she's over Jenna. And so while Jenna's in the dark not understanding what's going on and doesn't even know that Aaron's even mad at her, until Abe kind of says something to her, which thank God, because otherwise we just would have had this being around the bush thing for like ever. It was just quite annoying. And Uma moves out the way and like kind of makes, has Jenna sit. She's like, okay, you two talk. Just, just figure this out. And it turns out this whole entire issue that Aaron really has with Jenna she, ha she says all these issues that isn't really the real issue. She mentions um, the Jeff Lewis thing. She mentions the whole thing that Bryn said this, Bryn said that. But really the true issue is it all started at the reunion. 
And what was happening at the reunion is Bren was doing what she does the most, which is flirt with Jenna constantly and kept going in and out of their room. And Erin states what she thinks the real issue is. She's like, yeah, I think Bren was jealous of how close we were and did everything she can to eliminate that, eliminate that. And now they're no longer close. So to me, you're not even mad at Jenna. You're still mad at Brett. <laughs> and really what Uba said last episode about how they feel about Bren, she was right. It's just Uba is speaking for everyone and you wouldn't be able to speak because your, your communication sucks too. And I think that's the other issue I have with a lot of these ladies on this show. No one's communication is good. Everyone's communication sucks. Like in a, and the thing about it is the communication that everyone's having this off. It's like, it all sucks, but it sucks for a different reason. It's not even all for the same reason. Like, Erin is just ridiculously passive aggressive and she just really needs to stop being so freaking passive aggressive, like spit it out. Like, I don't understand how you pride yourself saying I'm a New Yorker, I'm a New Yorker, but you're like not, and you're just doing everything, but like saying what is on your mind. And, um, like Jenna isn't very good at like, um, reaching out to people. But the thing is, at least Jenna said that. Like, Jenna has been pretty honest about that from day one. My only issue with Jenna this season is the fact that she's just so obsessed with Bren this season. And she babies Bren. Like, I just don't like that. But outside of that, I don't see there's any other issues with, like, oh, and also she's not sharing any of her personal situation um, other than her career. So that's kind of annoying. <clears throat> and then Uba, Uba, the reason why her communication skills are not that great all the time is really mainly just because English is a second language for her. So when she gets really, really upset, she just kind of explodes, but doesn't explain why she's upset. Um, so that's quite irritating as well, but that's not really, that's not, I mean, her communication isn't great, but it's more like a fundamentally, it's just not great because of that. And then Bryn is just trying to overly produce everything and still trying to do this. I'm this flirt cutesy girl, but in real life, we could tell that she's diabolical and could be like really like um, Tamara 2.0. And honestly, she is giving that for me. And I, I don't like it. I mean, I, I hate to put it out there, but like, man, it's just really, there's a darkness about her. It's very diabolical. And I just can't, I can't with her. Um, and then Sai's kind of the only one that's straightforward. And then Raquel, we don't know much about her yet. And then Jessel's just kind of the fun loving one, um, who isn't really in any, any conflict at all at this moment. And yeah, that is that group in a nutshell. Oh, and then Becca is just kind of weird. <laughs> like, and I think that is kind of the overall problem with this cast. And also too, I could state the really huge obvious thing. None of these people were friends before in real life. And you could tell it's obvious that none of them had a real friendship before the show. Um, if they did, maybe they were friendly, but like, it wasn't like years and years and years type of situation. And when you put a whole bunch of people together to make a show and it's not organic, it shows. And this is the results of what we're seeing. Um, I do like though, representation wise, it is a much better show when it comes to like, you know, you have people with different backgrounds, different views and things like that. And I appreciate that. And I even appreciate that we did learn a little bit more about Uba this episode when she was talking about her experience as an immigrant um, and how she feels about the United States. I like that too, but it's just, for me, it's just when it comes to the conflict and outside of like their separate scenes, I don't, I, there's not really much to go with when it comes to the show. But anyway, um, I guess as I'm talking, I, I think this might be my last review of the show. I'll be honest. I think I'm done. <laughs> I, I kept going back and forth with this review. This I believe will be my final review of New York. 
I will maybe try to review the season finale. Like probably put it all together in a bow. And then that's maybe it. But that is a huge maybe. I think at this point I am going to drop the show. Because also too, in less than two weeks, The Real Housewives of Beverly Hills is coming back on. And I already know that's going to be good. And we already have other two other, three other Housewives shows that are doing well. Yeah, three of the Housewives shows are way better than this one. So, anyway, that does conclude the video. Please like, comment, subscribe to the channel if you get anything on the content. It's your girl Sharon, aka the Mel Nostalgic Runner. And I will see you next time. Bye.